Hey guys, thanks for joining me. So today, I'm going to be showing you a variation on a dip, where we're going to be combining a dip with some swiping to create our end product. Now dips, although a simple concept, can be one of the trickier techniques to pull off and come up with a good end result. So I'm also going to be showing you some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way for troubleshooting some of the common issues that people encounter while they're doing dips. So let's get started. As always, the paint brands and mixing ratios will be in the video description. On a hard surface, start by drawing an outline that's a little bit larger than the canvas size you're going to be using. Today I'm using a 10 by 10, so I'm just eyeballing a square that I know is a little bit larger than that. But if you need, you can lay your canvas down on your surface and draw an outline around the outside edge of it. Now spread your paint. You want a thin, even layer for a dip. You want enough paint on the surface to make sure that you're going to have enough to coat the surface of the canvas, but you don't want so much that any paint is going to squeeze out once you lay your canvas down onto the surface. After a few tries, you'll sort of get a feel for how much paint you want to put down on your surface. Once you've spread your paint, take a minute to pop your bubbles. For this dip, I want to be creating flower-like shapes. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to draw circles with your different colors. When you lay the canvas down on the surface of your paint, those colors are going to blend together and spread a little bit. And when you lift it, you are hopefully going to end up with a shape that looks quite organic and flower-like. I've chosen bright colors that I know are going to stand out and give me enough contrast against my dark background. I know it doesn't look particularly dark at the moment, but as you may have noticed, certain pigments such as dioxazine purple look much darker when they're dry than they do when they're wet. This particular blue that I'm using as a background color behaves in the same way. So I know that the colors that I'm putting on top of it need to be bright enough that they're going to stand out. I'm also adding in a couple of metallics to give me a little bit of sparkle and depth. My outside circle is titanium white, then gold, turquoise with a little bit of white added to lighten it up a bit, violet, and then I'm doing small dots of magenta around my center. Now I'm going to be adding lines of metallic green and gold sort of radiating out from my center flower structures, just doing this in an organic way. These are going to represent your leaves or stems. There are no hard and fast rules to the order in which you put down your colors. Just play around with it and have fun. When I'm working on a square canvas, I like to create a composition that's asymmetrical to add a little visual interest when all sides of your canvas are identical in length. Now, when you're ready to lay your canvas down onto the surface of your paint, this is where we need to start paying particularly close attention to technique. You need to line up your canvas along one edge of your paint. Now slowly lay the canvas down onto the surface of the paint. You want to do this on an angle as you're laying it down so that the air is forced out as the canvas contacts with the surface of the paint. If you were to lay your canvas straight down onto the surface of your paint, you would very likely trap air bubbles, which would leave you with spots on your canvas that didn't pick up any paint. Once your canvas is down, very gently and using hardly any pressure, smooth over the back of the canvas, making sure that every part of that canvas has made contact with the surface of the paint and there are no air bubbles trapped underneath. How you lift your canvas is another important part of this process. So you want to try to lift your canvas straight up, all sides evenly at the same time off the surface of your paint. If one side of the canvas breaks contact with the surface of the paint first, then your paint and your composition is going to all shift towards the opposite side of that canvas. When the canvas is up, I like to give it a good torching on low flame. That'll help any little cells to rise to the surface. I'm not using silicone in this dip, 
but the metallics and the high density of the titanium white will still create some small cells. Now the camera's not picking up all of the detail in this, but there's some good stuff going on that I like. You'll see more of that in the close-up at the end. But I am finding that the composition is a bit more central than I would like it to be, and I'd like some more movement coming out towards the edges. And that's where the swiping comes in. Now, if you're happy with what you've come up with when you've pulled up your dip, then you can of course stop at this point. But today, I'm gonna go a step further. Okay, so I've laid my canvas back down, and as I mentioned, I wanna take the movement in these flowers and have it draw the eye a little bit more out towards the edges of the canvas. To do this, I'm grabbing the paint at the edges with my little swipe tool and just gently dragging out towards the edges of the canvas. Now, I wanted these edges to sort of just uh, gently disappear into the background, not be a solid swipe out to the edge. So to help me achieve this, I've taken the edge of my swipe tool, which is actually a little cut up piece of a plastic binder divider, and I've sort of cut the tip into a gently rounded point. Now this is allowing me to swipe out and very gently lift up as I get closer to the edge of the canvas. And that's how I'm creating that little swipe that sort of just whips off and disappears towards the edge. So again, make contact, pull out towards the edge and decrease your pressure bit by bit by bit. The less pressure, the closer you get to the edge of the canvas. And that way your swipe will just sort of flow out and disappear. Of course, there are lots of other options for combining techniques when you do a dip as well. You could add paint to your swipe if you found you wanted some more color or you didn't have enough of your uh, leaves or stems picking up in the background. You could add some green and add some swipes. You could add some daubs of paint and blow them out. I often combine different techniques while I'm painting and yeah, it can end up with some pretty interesting results. So continue on until you're happy with your composition, then touch up any little spots you may need to touch up and do a final torch. And here we go. As always, if you have any questions or anything that I didn't cover during the video, then please leave me a comment. I'm always happy to answer any questions. All right, and here's that close up with the flash on. So you can see some of the small cells, that little bit of sparkle from the metallics, and the way that the colors have blended is pretty nice in this one. I'm, I'm pretty happy. I hope you found some of these techniques useful. Thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe. All these things help me to be able to keep bringing you these tutorials. So here's the almost dry result. You can see the blue starting to darken up, give me a little bit more contrast. Again, hope you liked this one and hope to see you for next week's video.